Hey guys, I'm Abhishek from Plugin India. All of us at Plugin India own only electric vehicles and create content for the EV community. In this episode of Electric Car Wash, we are going to talk about the Chinese EV maker BYD or Build Your Dreams. I know, I know, the moment we mention China, a lot of people are instantly triggered. We are no fans of China ourselves, but please just bear with us for one moment. BYD sells a full range of electrified buses, trucks, and cars and they are the global leaders in the electric bus space. The electric buses we see in cities like Pune, Hyderabad and other cities are made using BYD technology. When it comes to cars, they are huge in China and only recently have entered the European market. Warren Buffett's American company Berkshire Hathaway owns 8.5% of BYD. Berkshire Hathaway's 8.2% stake in the automaker held a market value of $5.9 billion at the end of 2020. The founder of BYD is Wang Chunfu, who is a chemist and a researcher at the company. Buffett partner Charlie Munger described Wang as a combination of Thomas Edison and General Electric's Jack Welch, something like Edison in solving technical problems and something like Welch in getting done what he needs to do. I have never seen anything like it. Wang from the start has focused on electric cars using cells with the lithium ion phosphate or LFP chemistry. While some manufacturers like GM and Hyundai struggle with battery recall and fire issues, BYD electric cars are safe and affordable. And now in 2021, BYD is the fourth largest battery manufacturer in the world. For me, the main advantage that BYD will have this decade is vertical integration. BYD makes most of its complex components that go in an electric car in-house. Here are three important points to consider. One, they control the manufacturing of lithium cells and battery packs. I'll talk about the revolutionary LFP-based blade battery later. Two, they make their own semiconductor chips via the subsidiary BYD Semiconductor. IC chips are one of the key components in the power management system of electric cars. Industry experts call it the CPU of an EV because it reduces power loss and improves reliability of the drivetrain. They have their own EV drivetrain platform with in-house manufactured power electronics. The BYD Platform 3.0 allows for the development of cars with a range of more than 1000 km, has support for dual motors and offers fast charging of 150 km in 5 minutes. I'll talk about the ePlatform 3.0 in a separate video. BYD makes their own chips and are insulated from the global chip shortage of 2021. They make cells, battery packs and power electronics. This kind of vertical integration will give BYD huge potential to disrupt the car market this decade. All BYD's competitors, Tesla, Ford, Volkswagen face supply constraints. This won't affect BYD. In 2020, BYD unveiled the LFP-based Blade battery. According to the published BYD patent, the cell unit of the Blade battery is designed based on a prismatic form factor. Unlike a traditional prismatic cell, however, the length of the Blade battery is extremely long while the depth and height are relatively short. As a result, the shape of the cell unit is like a blade. The Blade battery pack is expected to be far less susceptible to fire even when severely damaged. In a nail penetration test, for example, the new battery only hit surface temperatures of 30 to 60 degrees Celsius. In comparison, the lithium-ion battery was said to have reached 500 degrees and an LFP block battery was said to ha have reached 200 to 400 degrees. Even an overcharge of 260% did not lead to a fire or explosion in the cell. Apart from nail pen penetration tests, the blade battery was driven over by trucks, it was hit by objects and still the cells worked. This blade battery pack, I feel, is a game changer. I've observed over the years how Western electric car makers often run after acceleration times or more and more range. This leads them to use battery packs with chemistries like NMC that have higher energy density but perform poorly in safety. But BYD's LFP battery technology takes a middle route with a major emphasis on safety. Even Musk admitted that LFPs are more cost effective and using iron in the cathode compared to using nickel or cobalt won't lead to supply chain issues later this decade. Elon said it himself, even though most Teslas use battery packs with NMC cells. so. 
it is clear the writing is on the wall for NMC batteries. Blade batteries offer more advantages. BYD says that blade battery space utilization is 50% more efficient than that of conventional lithium iron phosphate battery packs because of its optimized battery structure. BYD also claimed that the backpack can be used for up to 1.2 million kilometers after 3000 cycles of charge and discharge. One of, the, one of the issues with LFP batteries was that the energy density was poor and thus was not suited for electric cars with long range. But now BYD blade batteries can offer pack level energy density of up to 140 watt hours per kilogram which is comparable to some NMC batteries. BYD is able to make blade batteries at cost less than $85 per kilowatt hour lower than the estimated cost of the latest LFP pack from CATL which is $100 per kilowatt hour. So the BYD battery is safer takes up less space, has decent energy density for better range and costs less. What is not to like about it? Should we automatically hate it just because it's from China? If so, then we should be focusing on building batteries that surpass Blade or even compare to it. If not, we hope large Indian companies are looking at this and sensing an opportunity. They should immediately sign a JV with BYD and make these Blade cells in India. They will be rolling in orders. This is, this is a huge opportunity. BYD also will be licensing the Blade battery pack to other car makers. Toyota has partnered with BYD to use Blade batteries in the upcoming all-electric SUV, the BZ4X, which will start deliveries in 2022. Hyundai, which recently had to spend a billion dollars recalling their Kona electric car because of safety issues with NMC batteries, are also signing an agreement with BYD to use their Blade battery. The Han EV is a mid-size luxury sedan and all its models are designed with a 76 0.9 kilowatt hour battery pack which fast charges from 30% to 80% in 25 minutes. The base model of the Han EV is a rear wheel drive with a reported all electric range of 605 km. There's also the electric crossover SUV, the Tang SUV, which also uses the Blade battery, has a capacity of 86.4 kilowatt hours and a range of about 500 km. The 2022 BYD E6 large people mover electric cars are being sold in select markets for around Rs 21 lakhs. We recently saw photos of the car being tested in India. BYD recently showcased the affordable subcompact Dolphin electric car. It is the first BYD car based on the new BYD E Platform 3.0 architecture and it's equipped with a BYD Blade battery. There are 300 km and 400 km range options being sold at 11 lakh rupees in China. Another interesting observation is that BYD is the only company in the world whose EVs have reached price parity with ICE cars. No wonder sales of BYD EVs are more than sales of BYD ICE cars. 88% of vehicles sold by BYD are EVs. This is a trend that we can expect in India too. Everyone will buy electric cars if car makers are honest and don't inflate pricing of electric cars. BYD is not in the disgusting business of pr protecting their ICE car business like what we see here in India with Mahindra or even Tata Motors who will ensure they don't launch small electric cars and price EVs greater than 10 lakh rupees to protect their ICE Nexon, their ICE Altros and their ICE Tigor business. And we don't agree that you can't have a practical sub 10 lakh rupee car in India. It will be interesting to see what part geopolitics plays in the future of Chinese investment and sales of EVs in the rest of the world. But it's still great to see Chinese car companies like BYD pushing ahead with the electrification of the world transport system, especially given how our legacy auto manufacturers seem impotent when it comes to EVs. If there are no major geopolitical issues, then we can safely say that BYD will become the top three worldwide manufacturer by 2020. It will capture most of the Chinese and European car market and will eat into the market share enjoyed by Japanese and American car makers like Toyota, Honda and Ford who are scared of EVs. Regarding India, we have seen the BYD E6 passenger and cargo vans on Indian roads. BYD India is based in Madras and may be interested in plying the commercial vans in India. Director of BYD India Ketsu Zhang said, and I quote, We are eager to bring our advanced green technology to assist Indian businesses to achieve their EV goals. We've received tremendous response for electric buses, as well as forklifts, especially from the Indian public and B2B sector. 
Seeing this, we've decided to introduce more electric commercial vehicles to the B2B segment starting Q4 2021. Moving forward, we'd love to be a part of every Indian consumer's journey into electric vehicles, the plans for which are still in the pipeline stage." End quote. So, my personal wish is that the BYD gets all their variants of electric cars, including the small Dolphin car, make them in India and push our car makers to launch more EVs. But we have to start somewhere and we are glad that BYD is here in India too. Now, I expect 50% of the comments below to mention some form of anti-China nonsense. But chew on this. Warren Buffett's company Berkshire Hathaway owns 8.5% of BYD and it's an American company. Himalayan Capital, another American company, has a stake in BYD too and other American fund companies own a huge percentage of BYD. So knock yourselves out with the China hatred. I don't like their communist government any more than you do. but. I do believe in a free market and all the trends are pointing to the fact that BYD is poised to be the top 3 car maker by 2030. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Do write in the comments below your observations and research on BYD's EV platform and batteries. I'll see you next week when we talk about the American car behemoth Ford.